We don't want our urban areas to be deserts. I think that's certainly not what the city of Vancouver wants to do. We're all about being the greenest city. We're all about growing food on our patios and our, our balconies. And to do that, we need pollinators to make sure that we actually get a tomato at the end of the day. So not all bees are honeybees. There's tons of different kinds of bees. Some of them being bumblebees, mason bees, leafcutter bees, mining bees, other types of ground nesting bees. We have bees that are green and red and blue and orange and black and you know every color really you can think of. It's very educational learning about bees. I'm trying to learn how to identify more native bees. The honeybee we all know, the bumblebee, there are many other amazing pollinators. We have about 20,000 species of native bees in the world, 450 here in British Columbia, and some native bees are in decline because of loss of habitat. And so what we find is if they lose these nest sites and, and food to eat, if they don't have enough of those resources, they're actually not able to maintain nice, lit, big population sizes and they go into decline. And that's why I think urban areas are not going to be the answer for every different kind of pollinator, but they can be important places to provide those resources so that our native bee species don't all go into decline. A very interesting fact that I learned is that not all bees live in beehives. Our native bees will make their homes in the ground and in the grass, so when we're aware of that, we won't destroy their habitat. It was quite new to me, because I always thought the holes in the ground were worms. <laughs> Bees and people good good together. Yeah. We kinda kinda ruined their habitat anyways with all this development, so I think it's our duty. They like to live in any place that has a combination of food to eat, which means pollen and nectar from flowers, and a place for them to make a home. Sounds a lot like us. When you're planning for your bee garden, you want to make sure that you have enough food for bees early in the season, in the spring, and then late in the season in the fall so that they have food throughout their whole foraging cycle. Many parks in Vancouver or Coquitlam or Surrey or wherever in Metro Vancouver, they're pretty barren. There are really a lot of lawn, a few wildflowers here and there, but there's not that buzzing of bees and, and hummingbirds feeding on, on red flowering current and moths at night and things. They don't have that kind of habitat that supports them. And I think that's a real loss. Those are the kind of small features, maybe subtle at times, but they really contribute to that experiential qualities of nature in the city. And if the city wants to encourage native bees in Vancouver, they're going to have to plant plants that they like to visit for forage. Native pollinators need native plants. If you make your, your the area around where you live attractive um, in terms of providing food and providing nests, they will come. They will, they will make at, at their houses with your house, and that means that if you are growing food, they will pollinate it for you. Um, if you provide them with other things to eat, food for bees means food for you, and so everybody can live happily ever after.